the stability and the potential for growth in South Africa as a constitutional democracy is on the line here. And uh, prevention is better than cure. It's been a very bad week for property rights in South Africa. The expropriation bill, which we here at the Center for Risk Analysis refer to as the EWC bill, because effectively it is a battering ram for expropriation without compensation, has been passed by the National Assembly, it is now going to the National Council of Provinces, the upper chamber of parliament. Joining me to discuss the grave threat posed by this bill to property rights in South Africa is Gabriel Krauser of the IRR. So Gabriel, not the first time we've had you on the show discussing this topic, but very bad news to report to the South African public. Yeah, it's, uh, it's exceptional. It's, uh, it's a very dark day. Let's just remember four key points on the expropriation bill. Firstly, it defines expropriation in a way that allows theoretically the government to take private property without even entering into the just and equitable test that the constitution requires. Secondly, in section 12.3, it allows expropriation without compensation on an open list of grounds, including where people have bought land to sell it for a profit and including where uh, owners have lost control over their property. In other words, it's been invaded. They can be subject to EWC. Uh, thirdly, it says that the government can give notice of its intention to expropriate without compensation before having been asked to give any reasons for doing so. And fourthly, it says that the government can affect the expropriation without compensation before a court process has been concluded. Uh, add it all together and it spells doom for economic prosperity uh, for the vast majority of South Africans. All right. And this comes hot on the heels of another piece of legislation, the Land Court Bill, which was also passed by Parliament this week in very record time. Uh, this, as we argued in a previous video, is part of a two-pronged assault on property rights. Well, could you explain briefly the risk there? Yeah, I mean, so the, the shocking thing is that the Land Court Bill and the, and the Expropriation Bill were both signed off by committee last week and both passed by the National Assembly uh, this week, uh, right uh, after each other. What the Land Court Bill does is basically answer the question that some people have asked, well, isn't it all okay because the courts will adjudicate this? Uh, professors like uh, Armin Duplessis have said you shouldn't worry about the expropriation without compensation clause being abused because independent courts will de defend you. Well, what the Land Courts Bill does is make sure that the courts will not be independent. It appoints independent assessors that can overrule judges. It says hearsay evidence can be dispositive and so on. There's more details on that. But basically, it undermines the independence of the judiciary exactly in dealing with matters of expropriation without compensation. All right, let's get back to this other piece of legislation, the EWC bill. Uh, this required a simple majority to pass through the National Assembly, uh, as opposed to the December 21 vote on the constitutional amendment. You're arguing that essentially this is a de facto attempt uh, to drive expropriation through, uh, trying to achieve what was proposed by the constitutional amendment bill, but through normal legislative processes. This is a clear attempt to circumvent the constitution. First, the ANC tried to change the constitution and failed to do so. And now it's basically just trying to steamroll through it. In order to stop that from happening, there are two options. One option is to sit and wait quietly uh, because cases will emerge. Bad things will happen. People's property will be taken. Uh, corrupt municipal officials that are presiding over bankrupt municipalities are going to go after peri-urban urban, uh, and rural dwellings in order to shore up their uh, patronage network, uh, which is their best hope at holding on to power. And that'll play out through years. Uh, courts will be involved, starting at the magistrate's court, then the land court, then the land court of appeal. The Supreme Court of Appeal can't be accessed. You might hope to get to the constitutional court, but all while this is happening, South Africa's economy is going to deteriorate and people's livelihoods are going to be deprived by government abuse. And then you might hope that at the end of it all, the constitutional court comes and says, well, okay, clearly this is inconsistent with the constitution. The other option uh, is to stop this in its tracks. Uh, 
Now, the IRR is prepared to go to court on this, uh, and uh, hopefully by the shortest route possible. That is, that's what we're planning to do. But in the meanwhile, I think that it would be much better to, to, to stop it in its tracks. In order to do that, we are reaching out to every member of the National Council of Provinces and saying, stop this, it's unconstitutional, vote it down, reject the bill, or amend it better, according to the four points that I've made, uh, fix those things and it'll be okay cut the EWC, change the expropriation definition, uh, and change the order of process so that the ordinary citizen is defended against the state rather than the other way around. Uh, we are also reaching out to uh, all the major banks, all the major financial institutions, the Consumer Goods Council, uh, everyone involved in the food supply chain. Really, uh, I mean, the IRR is going to be reaching out uh, internationally as well, I think anyone with an interest in South Africa has got an interest in blocking this bill. And our call is on ordinary citizens to do the same. There are going to be hearings in the provinces, in all nine provinces. There should be an acceptance of written submissions. And people, I think, uh, it behooves every citizen, every resident really too, to, to put in the effort to make your voice heard in opposition to this. Uh, the example of the constitutional amendment being beaten and uh, the ANC only being able to muster 204 votes uh, is a reminder that public pressure can count, uh, and, uh, but only if people uh, put their shoulder to the wheel. Minister Patricia DeLille, who has been the primary sponsor of this bill, uh, is on record as saying that uh, what is wrong is to instill fear-mongering. It distorts the facts in a debate about land, and this is done all too often. What would you say in response to Minister DeLille? I think that... In the face of a threat, the proper thing to do is alert people of the danger. Venezuela, Zimbabwe, these are just two examples that we've drawn on in which complacency ruled the day in the face of danger. And as a result, millions of lives were ruined. It is complacent, I think, for Minister DeLille uh, to say what she's saying. It is frank, honest, and uh, important to stand up against it. All right, well, let's unpack the politics of this more closely, Gabriel. We have uh, these two bills that are being rushed through Parliament. And what does this suggest about the state of play in the country's politics, but also within the ANC? I think the wrong idea is to think that the ANC is doing this because they're hoping to get a lot of votes in 2024, because everyone wants expropriation without compensation. Uh, the IRR's polling in 2020 showed uh, that uh, given the option of expropriation and uh, economic growth and more jobs, uh, only 15% of white respondents and 15% of black respondents preferred EWC. But 80% of respondents of all races, at least 80%, preferred uh, growth. Uh, people understand that it is an either or. Uh, Julius Malema himself in 2018 said, the first thing you got to know if you want to go for expropriation without compensation is that people are going to die, uh, people are going to be killed. And the second thing you've got to know is that it will spread poverty. He said you must take the pain in order to get the principle of race-based revenge. Um, but most South Africans don't think that way. So this is not a great vote winner. Uh, what this is, is a very important piece of policy within the ANC uh, agenda. It was promised in 2017 at the last uh, leadership elective conference uh, that they would come out and impose expropriation without compensation. That's a promise that Ramaphosa needs to keep uh, in order to secure his leadership position, especially in light of the Palapala allegations and all the fires that need to be put out there. So it seems uh, striking at first that uh, these bills have been rushed through so quickly at record pace. Uh, but if you reflect on the fact that by the end of the year, uh, the best position Ramaphosa can be in for his own uh, position inside the ANC is to have already signed off on these two bills and turned them into law, I think it makes sense that the ANC is moving at such a rapid pace. And obviously, just to conclude, Gabriel, the fight's not over. What next steps are you and your colleagues going to be taking? Yeah, so we are, um, we are reaching out to every major invested uh, body, um, other civil society organizations, political parties, we are glad to see that there was a coalition that stood in unity against this. Um, we're reaching out to ordinary citizens. We've got a, 
uh, petition that you can sign up that we'll be delivering to the National Council of Provinces. We'll be making official submissions there. We'll also be trying to make oral submissions. We're going to get to as many of those provincial hearings as we can. Um, uh, domestically, uh, major businesses that have uh, pressure points that they can touch on government to try and uh, get them to slow this thing down and reverse it, make the amendments that we suggest, and internationally, we'll be reaching out too um, uh, with, the, with the frank warning that uh, the the stability and the potential for growth in South Africa as a constitutional democracy is on the line here. And uh, prevention is better than cure. It's much better to warn against this and stop it than it is to wait for it to happen and then afterwards throw up your hands and say, well, you know, a full-on socialist attack on property rights once again uh, led to disaster. Uh, what a pity. Gabriel Krasner, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What agenda do you think is driving the expropriation bill through Parliament? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this analysis, please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.